Good morning, boys and girls, and welcome back once again to Hebron Sunday School Online. Glad you're able to join with us this morning. Now, last week, you remember that we described God's Word as a rule book that he has given to instruct us how we should live. But did you know that the Bible is also described as many other things? It's described as a sword, described as a lamp and a light. But did you know that it's described as a mirror or a looking glass? Looking glass is really the old fashioned name for a mirror. Now I've got a mirror here, one of these, yep. Now this mirror is, uh, well, it's, it's my wife's mirror and uh, you can look at it. One side you see yourself as you are and the other side you see yourself about 10 times bigger than you are and I don't really like that side. But anyhow, what does the Bible say about a mirror? Well, if we read in James chapter 1 and verse 23 and 24, this is what it says. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is likened unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. So what James is saying is that if we look at ourselves in the mirror, you might have looked at yourself in the mirror this morning, fixed your hair or buttoned up your shirt. And perhaps if your hair was sticking up well, you would see uh, you needed to do something with it. You wouldn't just go uh, on uh, out with your hair the way it was. Or if your shirt was buttoned in the wrong buttons, buttoned up wrong, well, you would fix it. But James is talking about people who look into God's word and they see things that are wrong with their lives or they see things that need to be changed or things they need to do and they see these clear instructions from God's word and yet they just continue on as if nothing had happened <coughs> excuse me so the bible is a mirror it shows us what we need to do in our lives and how perhaps we need to change some things so interesting verses from James chapter 1 and verse 23 and 24. To help you remember this, I thought perhaps that we could make a mark. Now all you need is a piece of kitchen foil like this and an old cereal box, cut up a cereal box and you can set the, the kitchen foil around the cereal box. Fold it in like this. Okay. Press it down gently, all folded up just like this. You can get a piece of cardboard, another bit of a cereal box, write the verse along the top and perhaps colour in down the sides. I didn't get mine finished, but then stick your mirror onto the cardboard and there you are, you have your very own homemade mirror that will remind you that God's word is like a mirror. When we look in it, we see ourselves as we really are. And it also tells us the things that we need to correct, just as you may need to correct your hair when it's sticking up, or your tie when it's not straight, or your buttons of your shirt when they're not buttoned up correctly. Now, we've got another verse to learn this morning, and we're very glad that Ryan's with us. Ryan's been able to take some time off from nursing his new daughter, and here he is to teach us this week's memory verse. Good morning, boys and girls, and welcome again to Sunday School. Today's memory verse is a verse that is very close to my heart, and it's one that I'm sure we can all relate to, even in these days, I trust that the homeschooling is going well. I know your teachers have changed. Maybe sometimes your parents aren't the easiest teachers to listen to, but I hope the homeschooling is going well and that you're getting the work done. But one verse that I think we could all relate to at this time is found in the book of 1 Peter. 1 Peter 
chapter 5 and the verse number 7. And it says there, Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Now this verse is close to my heart because this is a very special verse. It says there, Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Now boys and girls, in these days when things aren't just the way they used to be, lots of us have different cares, different worries, different anxieties. And sometimes it's very hard to know where or who we can talk to when it comes to these cares or these worries. You know, sometimes it's nice to talk to friends. It's nice to talk to our mum or dad. But you know, boys and girls, there is one who the Bible tells us here where we can take all our cares, all our worries, all our different anxieties and take them to him because he cares for us. And that is the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible here is talking about the Lord Jesus himself and he's instructing us, cast all your care upon him. Now to cast something, if I was uh, to go and to take up fishing, if I was to become a fisherman, some might say that I might cast my net into the water. Well, that simply means that I'm to throw or I'm to give out my net into the water. And you know, this verse is telling us the same thing. We're to give away, give out our fears, all our worries, our care upon the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, how do we do that? Do we write him a letter? Do we send an email? No, we come to the Lord Jesus Christ in prayer. You see, God has given us an access, each and every one an access to come and to speak unto him. And that is through the power of prayer. So the Bible tells us if we have worries, if we have fears, if we have anxieties, we're to cast them, we're to give them out, to give them on to the Lord. Why? For he careth for you. You know, boys and girls, the Lord Jesus Christ, he loves each and every one of us. And God loves each and every one of us so much so that God gave his only begotten son so that each and every one of us could come unto him and be saved. I know, boys and girls, he cares for us. He cares for me and he cares for you. And because he cares, because he cares for his children, for his own, he wants to hear from us. He wants to uh, hear us talking to him. You know, it would be very sad if we had a best friend and we never talked to them. We just went from week to week and never spoke to them, never were in contact with them. Well, the Lord Jesus Christ, he cares for us and he wants us to be in communion with him. He wants us to speak to him in prayer. So the verse again, casting all your care upon him for he careth for you. I wonder could we say it all together? After two, one, two. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 7, Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Now I think you could say it a little bit louder than that. I know that you're all uh, wanting to shout and to scream, but let's say it nice and loud so that everybody in the house, maybe there's an older brother or sister who's still lying in bed, or maybe dad's still lying in bed. Maybe he's had a hard week at work. So let's say it nice and loud and wake everybody up that's in the house. After two, one, two. The Bible says in First Peter chapter 5 and the verse 7, Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. I wonder, boys and girls, is there one or two this morning that would like to take a little video all of you saying this verse? Take you a little video of yourself, get your mum or dad to record it, send it through to Wesley, and you never know, there might be a little prize in the post. And just remember, even in the week ahead, even if there are things that may worry you, that may cause you anxiety, may cause you some fear, remember there's one that we can talk to. Remember there's one who we can go to with any fear, with any little anxiety, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan, for uh, bringing that memory verse to us this morning. 
and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing all those videos that you send in with the verse uh, recorded. Now, in just a few moments, we're going to go and join Elaine. Elaine's in the kitchen. She's doing something really exciting this morning, so uh, we're eager to get there. But before we do that, we're going to bow our heads. We're going to ask for God's help uh, throughout the remainder of our Sunday school this morning. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time that we can spend with the children and some of the mums and dads as well this morning. Lord, we just thank you for your precious word that Ryan has been explaining to us this morning. We thank you, Lord, most of all, that you died for each and every one of us. You went to the cross and there you shed your precious blood for our sins. And oh Lord, we just pray now that as we come to hear your word again from Elaine, that you will help us to listen carefully, help us to pay attention to what you would have us hear this morning. And we pray especially for the boys and girls listening in who don't know thee as their saviour. We pray that today they might come and put their faith and their trust in the Lord Jesus. For we ask all this now for your name's sake. Amen. Right, over to Elaine and let's join her in her kitchen. Hello boys and girls and here we are back in the kitchen again today and I'm sure your mummies and maybe your daddies are thinking the same thing that these days we seem to spend an awful lot of our time in the kitchen don't we? Well there's actually a special occasion coming up in our house in the next few days it's going to be someone's birthday so we need a birthday cake. Do you like cake? I'm sure you do and cake reminds us that there's a special occasion, doesn't there? When there's cake in the house, it's usually for a reason. It's maybe somebody's birthday, or it's an anniversary, or maybe it's Christmas time, or maybe it's just a treat. Maybe on a Friday afternoon when you've got all your schoolwork done for the week, or Saturday, or maybe Sunday afternoon, it's lovely to have a little bit piece of cake. Well, I decided that I would try and bake a birthday cake. Now, I'm not a very good baker, but I thought, how hard can it be to put all these things together and make a cake? So I got out my recipe book here. It's a beautiful picture of a cake on here, and there was lots of different recipes. And you know, boys and girls, as I was looking through this recipe book, it reminded me a bit of the Bible. And the Bible is like a recipe book for our lives. And today as we're thinking about this cake, we're going to think about the ingredients, the things that go into a cake. Do you know what goes into a cake whenever you make one? Well, I've got some of the things here and in this little bowl here, now we would need more than this, but this is just to show you a little bit of it. There's flour. All cakes need some flour. And then in this bowl, another white powdery sort of substance is sugar. Cake would be very bitter, wouldn't it, if there wasn't any sugar in it. And then in this one, I've got a little bit of butter. We need something, butter or oil or margarine, to help it all stick together and mix together. And then in this one here, what's this, boys and girls? It's an egg. And all the recipes that I looked at to make my cake all needed egg in them. Now, you would think, when you think of a yummy cake, how delicious it tastes, that all these things on their own would taste good, wouldn't you? Well, we do a taste test and see if they all taste good. What one will I start with? Will I go with the flour first of all? Right, have you ever tried to eat flour on its own? I haven't. And I'm not really looking forward to this, boys and girls. Will we give it a go and see what happens? I'll just take a tiny wee bit. <laughs> that is not very nice. And now I feel I have flour sticking to my lips and the top of my mouth and my tongue. The on its own, I might need a drink of water to get that washed away. Oh, it's really not good. So on its own, the flour, it's bland, it's dry. No, I wouldn't recommend eating flour on its own. I think after that, I need to try the sugar. 
Okay, it shouldn't be as bad. Sure it shouldn't. Mmm, that's better. A wee bit of sugar definitely does help. So that's okay. Then the next one is the butter or the margarine. We'll try just a little bit of it as well. That's not too bad. It's okay. The flour has definitely been the worst so far. The flour was dry and bland. The sugar, it was lovely. Very sweet and sugary. Now, what about this egg? Do you just go like this? No, of course not. We know we need to crack the shell and get the yolk and the egg out of the inside of that egg. Now, I can't actually eat this, boys and girls, because it's very bad for you to eat raw eggs. So we'll have to imagine what that egg would taste like. I don't think it would be very appealing on its own, would it? So there we have the four main ingredients that go into a cake. And I think we're all agreed that on their own, they don't taste very good. But yet when you take those all together and you mix them all up, whether you beat them in a bowl or you use a whisk like this or you put them into a mixer, suddenly you can create something wonderful. Now, as I said, I'm not the world's best baker and I don't think Mary Berry would be very proud of me and I certainly wouldn't get into the Great British Bake Off. But when I took these ingredients and I had to add a wee bit of chocolate, I was able to create this. Now, we haven't cut it yet, so we'll see what it tastes like whenever we get this cake cut. But it does look good, doesn't it, with the wee chocolate hearts and all on the top of it. And hopefully, it's a chocolate fudge cake so whenever we get that cut, maybe warm it up and have some ice cream, it'll taste very nice. But boys and girls, I'm not just here today to talk to you about baking a cake. I'm here to teach you an object lesson about the ingredients and making the cake. And the verse that we want to think about is found in Romans chapter 8, verse 28. And in that verse, it says, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Now, it's a bit like baking, isn't it? That all things will work together for good. Do you remember I showed you these four ingredients at the start and we tasted them and some of them weren't very nice. Do you know these four ingredients actually remind us of some of the experiences that we have in life? Boys and girls, not everything in life is rosy. Not everything is happy. We do have some times in life where things are sad, things are hard, things taste a bit, a bit bitter at times. Maybe you've fallen out with a friend and there's a little bit of bitterness between you. Maybe you've fallen, maybe you fell off your bicycle and you hurt your leg or you hurt your arm and you're hurting. Maybe your pet got very old and passed away you were very sad about that. And I'm sure as you think back over your wee short life, you can think of times when you were sad, when times were bitter and times were hard. Yeah, like some of these ingredients, they weren't very nice. But then there were other times, a bit like the sugar. Things were pretty sweet. Things were good, weren't they? I'm sure you have got some lovely happy memories of well, as well of when times were good, when you had a nice holiday. Maybe it was your birthday celebration and you had your friends all round. There's been lots of good memories as well. And yet God takes the good memories and the bad memories and the good experiences and the bad experiences and he mixes them all together in our lives. But you know the important message that we have today boys and girls is that God is always there. No matter what you are going through or how hard things might be for you sometimes, God is there. And as our verse told us, that he is working all things together for good. And that is a lovely promise. But you know, boys and girls, you can only have that promise today. Because it says, as we go on through the verse, to them that love God. 
We can claim that promise if we love the Lord Jesus Christ, if we have asked him into our heart as our saviour. If you don't know God today, you cannot claim that promise. Do you know there are people in the Bible and they had very hard times and yet God was with them. I wonder can you think of any? There's a few that I can think of. Do you remember Joseph? Look at the hard time that Joseph had. His brothers sold him as a slave into Egypt. They dug that pit and they put him into the pit. And then when he went to Egypt, he ended up in prison. And I'm sure there were times that Joseph wondered what was happening. And yet God never left him. God was always by his side. And then we think of Daniel. Remember him in the lion's den. Again, God was with him. God shut those lions' mouths so they could not harm him. And there was Queen Esther. We're told that she was chosen for such a time as this. Esther was there to save the Hebrew people. And poor Job. Job was terribly badly afflicted. He had really poor health. He lost all his wealth and he lost his family. And yet Job never gave up on God. And you know, boys and girls... Sometimes, like those people in the Bible, when they were going through really hard times, they began to experience how good their God really was. You see, God is good to us all the time. Not just when things are going well, but God is there in the hard times as well. And we need to learn to trust him, even when things aren't going well. And we need to learn that he is there looking out for us and he cares for us because he loves you and today if you're at home and you're listening to this message you remember that God loves you God loves you so much he sent his son to die on the cross to save you and boys and girls he wants you to put him first in your life just like we were learning in the memory verse last week in Matthew chapter 6 verse 33 but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness And all these things shall be added unto you. So boys and girls, the next time you're sitting down to a nice big slice of cake, or maybe you're baking in the kitchen, or maybe you're just licking the spoon and going in to get the little bits that are left over, remember, all these ingredients on their own, they didn't all taste very nice at all. And yet God can take them, and God can mix them all together, and create something absolutely wonderful. That's what God did when he saved us. He took us as we were. We didn't have to go and get all dressed up before we could come to the Lord Jesus Christ. We just came and we trusted him and we asked him to be our saviour. You're like these raw ingredients and today God is just waiting for you to give your life to him and think what he could do with you boys and girls. Maybe some of you would be missionaries. Some of you might decide to be preachers. Maybe some of you one day will have your own Sunday school class and you'll be able to teach them these precious truths from God's word. Who knows what God can do with your life? Just put your trust in him today and let him take control of you and he will work all things together for good. Boys and girls, thank you so much for listening and I hope that the next time you sit down with that piece of cake now that you'll remember something about today's lesson. Thanks Elaine for teaching us this week's Bible lesson. Just wonder will I get a sample of that cake? I'll have to wait and see. Well boys and girls you've got lots to do this week. I hope you can all manage to make your mirrors and uh, send a picture of them to me and we'll have a prize for the for the most creative, the, the best one. Uh, Don't forget to send in your videos that Ryan has asked you for of you reciting the verse. And of course, most importantly, remember to read God's word. Those of you who are doing the Bible challenge, thank you for sending in the shots of the different weeks that you have done. Uh, Some haven't sent in week one as yet, so I encourage you to take a picture of that, send it in, and we'll get your reward out to you in the post. So until next week, 10.30 on Facebook. Have a good week and God bless each and every one of you.